Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Let's now get to our first major conversation with a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Paul Ananamba. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. So we're basically talking this morning about the Chief Justice of Nigeria who has summoned um, seven judges over conflicting judgments that you know, they've given in several cases. Um, I want you to first get your initial reaction to this. How much of a national embarrassment to the Nigerian judiciary would you say this is? as the CGN Tanko Mohammed and MBA President Olumide Akpata has described it. Well, um, we cannot measure the quantum of the embarrassment. Um, I do not know whether the judges know the level of um, beyond embarrassment uh, harm done to the judiciary and to legal practice. Uh, let me summarize it by telling you uh, the way I felt when I saw on the social media uh, 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 you know, this picture that went viral where a judge was painted to be hawking injunction and politicians and politicians were going to buy their injunction and walking away. An editorial cartoon. A, a, that cartoon, that depicts what it is. So it means that justice or injunctions and judgments and orders is a matter of highest bidder. Mm -hmm. You go and buy and you go. And you remember that Today, some elected officers are described as court elected officers. Mm. So it gets to the it gets to that point. Again, you remember June 10, 1993. I'm not talking about June 12. I'm talking about June 10. At a D at an hour of the night when courts are normally not sitting. Justice Basi Peme in this country issued an ex parte order to stop an election. And the application of ABN, you remember, Association of Veterans Nigerians. And that order was to stop election a few hours away. I met, uh, the, the electoral body then refused to obey that order, proceeded, and again, June 15, uh, another order to stop uh, announcing the results and all that. And that is the whole uh, problem of June 12. Mm -hmm. So the judiciary also played a role in that. Now, we are already going towards elections again, and we are beginning to see ex parte orders to remove a chairman of a, a political party that is a major opposition political party. And then set that political party on fire. Rather than putting the other party on notice and then hearing to the both parties for the benefit of those who don't understand what ex parte order means, it is an order made by a court here in one party. It is made in very urgent cases. And in that type of situation, it will be uh, a situation that will, that will be uncontrollably bad if we wait to put the other party on notice. What was the urgency about removing the chairman of a political party. What was it? As if that was not enough, uh, in far away, not an, said KB State, uh, uh, another judge issues another, said no, uh, return Uche uh, Secondus. Ms. Ayananamba, I, I want you to help us, you know, for people who don't understand, you know, this the depth of this case, I want you to help us understand you know, when we say um, it's an embarrassment, what exactly do you mean? 
Is it that these um, judges are breaching that, any... Excuse me? What it means is that the, the, the judiciary, the court system is a sacred institution. It does not act in a confused, disorderly manner. It doesn't act to cause confusion. Justice is to restore sanity. Now, when it gets to a point where litigants now know that, oh, if you have money, you can buy. Now, if uh, there are principles by which cases are decided, why will a Porter Court, High Court, or a court in the River State Judiciary make another? Another court in KB makes another order. Another one in Calabar makes another on in respect of one matter alone. All right, Mr. Anand, about and so they are all ex parte orders. Yeah, so so this is this is where um, I believe a lot of people are, are confused. Why um, why would that be? It, why, it, why, is there... why is it not an embarrassment? So it means that can, can you hear me? It's possible about? that we start even the twenty twenty three in the presidential elections and. 10 courts issued 10 uh, ex parte orders. Right. Stopping, 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 stopping. That's what the embarrassment is. Mr. So Anandabak, can you hear me? We become, we become um, uh, belittled in the eyes of the world. These things are reported on the, in the internet. They are reported in the news of other countries. Tomorrow you say a Nigerian country, they, they don't have a court system. Their court system right. is compromised. Mr. Anandabak, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, so, so this is what I, I would ho I hope that we can you know make clearer here. Do these judges um, find a way to interpret these cases different um, after getting paid, or are there certain details or loopholes in these cases that they can always reach out to? To give a totally different, you know, um, um, court or injunction or order. Thank you. I don't know about whether anybody is paid. That's not the issue for me. What is being said is these orders are made ex parte. You did not hear the other party. These orders are in respect of political parties. Look at a number of states now. Now, how do you explain who will be on the ballot paper in Abga now? Let me ask you. You wouldn't know. That goes to destabilize INEC with respect to that election. And it could lead to uh, restiveness by uh, politicians and uh, even the populace as to uh, 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 our candidates are not candidates, and there could be riots and violence, and lives and property will be lost. That is the problem. Now, the, the, the judiciary, the courts are seen as the last hope of the common man. If that last hope is removed, what will the common man, what will the Nigerian, what will people do? So, Mr. Nanamba, Mr. Nanamba, yes. so what is, what is causing this problem? Would you say, um, that the issue here is the fact that these judges hear this matter ex parte. Would you say it's corruption, like that editorial cartoon that people, um, you know, talked about, you know, buying judgment? Would you say it's corruption, or would you say it's a lack of synergy or communication within these judges? What exactly is the root challenge here? The the, the issue is every judge has a judicial code. You don't just come up and you are made a judge. It would have been at least ten years at the bar. And you will have integrity and you will be trained at the NGI. You will be told these are do's and don'ts of this office. Now, the NJC had continuously drummed it to judges don't issue ex parte orders, particularly in political cases. And then you go on to issue ex parte orders. You issue one, another judge counters it, another one counters it. We, it, it is, the courts are not political parties. 
Now, you are asking what the problem is. The problem is deviation from the code of uh, uh, conduct of judges. Yes, um, a judge has the right to decide a case one way or the other and will not be punished. Many judges have been removed because of expert orders in this country in the manner they have been issued. What is being said is politicians will come and litigants will come with various uh, skewed facts. Why you are a judge is that you look at, you become circumspect. You look at the facts and then in this type of cases, removal of a chairman of a party, uh, removal of a candidate, put the other party on notice, give a, an abridged time, hear the, all the parties and decide the matter one way or the other. That's what is expected of a judge at the level of a high court at least. Okay, well, now that, so, now that seven of them have been summoned, um, Sananaba, what do you expect from the meeting with the CJN? Um, how effective will this meeting be? And is there, you know, expected to be a different way with which these things can be addressed, either through the NBA or the NJC? Well, I am, I am pleased that the CJN took that step. Um, he has acted properly, in my view, as the head of courts in Nigeria. Because uh, the box stops with him. He's the chairman of the NGC. And a major hurdle to cross is being able to uh, get any of the judges to answer. Uh, because there must be a petition. So we don't know whether there's a petition as of today. If there's no petition, nothing will be done. And the Nigerian will be saying, these judges, this, they, they, no, you can get away with all those kind of things. Now, when the chief judge states of the federation uh, invites the heads of court in the states where those judges issue those orders, I think it is respectful. I think it is the way to go. Because you can no longer say that the NJC is not aware. The NJC is aware. And it is uh, from the part of the world where I'm from, before you take the first son of the community uh, uh, in a disgraceful manner, they, uh, we normally prescribe that uh, you, you, you let his kinsmen know what he has done. I think that is the style of the CJN. And that is correct, and that is fine. Beyond that, it's expected that the CJN will, as the chairman of NJC, take up this matter at the NJC. So what's it is not only the judges. Okay. These cases were filed by legal practitioners. And that's where I am also happy with the MBA. The president of MBA has become very vocal, another path, other Arms of NBA are vocal about it. We should not also condone our colleagues from at the back, who knowing that these orders are ought not to go ex parte, fire them ex parte. Mm -hmm. Who at the time of um, arguing these applications, even if they were ex parte, did not draw the attention of the judges. Mr. Ananamba, we might have to reconnect with you there because we're having um, technical issues with your network. Um, while we try to reconnect with Mr. Ananaba, he's really made a lot of valid points and even opened my eyes to how the judicial system should actually work. Some key points that I've taken away from that conversation is it said that the judiciary should bring sanity, not cause chaos. And chaos, the latter, is what we're seeing right now when one, you know, one judge in one state is saying, 
you're no longer the chairman of, of this party. And then that, that aggrieved party goes ahead to another state and it says, oh, you're now chairman. Another you know, court gives another judgment. You know, it, we've seen cases like this time and time again. Like you mentioned, it seems like a total mess in Anambra right now because who really are the candidates when different courts are giving different judgments? You know, you also see the case with the APC. Sometimes these judgments seem very fuzzled and people do not understand. Is the court saying A or the court saying B? So many other judgments you see in the case in the River State where the court went ahead to say that it is the state government who have the power and the constitutional rights to go ahead and collect taxes from the state. And then you see the FIRS going to file an appeal that will now put a stay of execution on that other judgment. So it really seems to be a mess. But good to know we have Mr. Ananamba back. Mr. Ananamba, please go ahead. Um, you were talking about the role of these lawyers, you know, in this whole judicial mess. Yeah, I, I was just saying that it is not only about the judges, it's also about the lawyers, many of whom are very senior lawyers. The MBA should, uh, I also expect the MBA to, which it's already doing, to go on to uh, invite all the lawyers that got involved in these cases to explain their roles so that no more lawyers will not go on this lane of putting down the judiciary putting down our practice. As a legal practitioner, I have nothing more to do, nothing else to do than this job. So when, when the society loses confidence in the court system, they don't patronize me, they don't patronize the next lawyer. So what are we going to do? It wouldn't happen in England, it wouldn't happen in the US. We what? must uphold the sanctity of the legal profession. So the, 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 the bar should get to work, the bench is already getting to well, the bench should get to the to work. The invitation of the CJN is to, uh, to the heads of courts, they are the, the chief judges of those states so that they can harmonize how to deal with this uh, uh, expertise orders that have been issued and they know how to go about it with the judges that issue the conflicting orders. All right. Ms. Anand, about, um, great thing you started by talking about the 1993 case. Uh, so I was going to ask if this is something that has always been, you know, in existence, conflicting court orders and, you know, injunctions for sale. Yeah, I went to 1993 because it, it was when it came to limelight to use expert orders to truncate democracy. Yeah, so, so has this always been in existence with the Nigerian judiciary uh, system? Oh, and, sure. And can expert it... Orders. No, 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 not ex parte orders, orders, not ex parte orders in, in particular, but conflicting court, you know, um, um, uh, judgments here and there. Um, has it always been in existence or, and is it just simply getting worse now? And why I'm asking of uh, the, you know, the history of this is also because I need to understand from your perspective, if we can actually put an end to this. Yes, um, it happens often, but not uh, um, uh, 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 in a calculated and premeditated manner. Of course, you could have conflicting orders of the Court of Appeal and sometimes the Supreme Court. The, pro the point about this is that this is, diff this is, this is, this is not the excusable part. Whatever human beings have done also have some imperfections. Yeah. But this state of uh, Anambra uh, for, and uh, you know, in, in politics is premeditated because there's already a warning. These are courts of coordinate jurisdiction, base courts, not the higher courts of the Court of Appeal or the Supreme Court. Now, it has got, gotten worse because politicians are now exploiting it and perhaps trying, as 2023 is coming about, maybe some may be thinking of using it in a more debased manner. Now, should we watch it and just do nothing? No, that's why I, that's all I've been saying. How do we stop it? Now, the NJC should restate, aside from dealing with those who have gotten into it now, restate zero tolerance for use of court orders and judgments, not only expert orders. 
even interlocutory orders, even judgments of tribunals, or could I mean election tribunals. Uh, you, uh, for those of us who are who are frequent to election petition tribunals, uh, we, we cannot explain all that we see. That's of judgment you see. You see judgments that you cannot understand how how you can justify it. So let the judges and the lawyers keep to the requirement of meeting out justice. That is what will make people not to riot after an election because they know that the courts will correct everything wrong. That is the point. And then we cannot now see our democracy that were built over the years truncated because of judge, judges' decisions. All right. okay. well, having said that, yeah. the, the, judici the chief justice of federation should also begin to look at how technology will be helpful to us by uh, having an electronic uh, information to all judges, which every judge can link to, to know uh, if there have been ex parte orders or orders with respect to any question Indeed. before they issue any order. Indeed, Ms. Anna, that really links and to my... If a judge, okay, go ahead. If a judge finds out that and he has made an order which is wrong, the judge that should not be allowed. We he, at the point he gets to know, even if it's in his house, he can issue an order setting it aside on his own. So we begin to have some sanity. Mm -hmm. I said that links to my earlier question where I was asking if one of the challenges is lack of synergy and communication between these judges. But you've now gone ahead to say, yes, that's something that could be improved on. So I wanted to ask you, um, based on your legal expertise, Mr. Ananamba, how do we draw the line between these conflicting court judgments and the rights of a party to appeal? Because they have that judicial right to appeal. If you're aggrieved by a court judgment, you can go ahead and appeal to a higher court. So how do we make a distinction? Where do we draw the line between when, this court, um, court, when, the, between when these judges go ahead and break the professional rules of conduct, breach those rules of conduct, and then when you know, people can go ahead and appeal and get a deferring judgment from the court? That line is drawn by what we call forum shopping. Come again? Forum shopping is okay. when litigants go from court to court to find the court that will favor them. Hmm. So what you see in these conflicting orders, there's forum shopping underlining it, which is an, a, a crass abuse of process. Hmm. You may find out that before the judge in KB gave that order. The litigants, the politicians may have gone to several other courts and they will have been refused. Where they are refused, you will not be reported. You may not be reported. So you can shop and any judge that agrees, he gives you order. Any other agree. Rather than appealing that ex parte order. Rather than appealing that ex parte order. The right of appeal is the proper way to go. Even though the current rules of court do not encourage or permit appeal over ex parte orders. Now, if an ex parte order is made, the proper thing to do, to, yes, appeal, but not appeal immediately, is to bring an application to set aside that ex parte order. If it's in the Federal High Court, Within 14 days of applying to set aside that order, that order ex is expires automatically. So the law has provisions for ways to deal with these issues. But because the politician or the lit litigant does not want uh, justice really, but, but just to steal a match, just a win, just to have a win, he, he would rather prefer working with his or her lawyers to go through the way of um, ex parte orders, shopping in other jurisdictions to get uh, some orders. 
That is what is wrong in the process. That's where the line is. Nobody is stopping a party uh, from exercising pro, pro, uh, constitutional rights. But you exercise your constitutional right within the rules and laws of the country and not being mischievous to beat the system, to debase the system. When the only thing standing today is the courts in this country, I can be sure. The, 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 the legislature, you see, um, members of House of Assembly, of Assembly more or less flow with the, go the way their governors are. The, 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 the ESCO do what they, what they want. Executive Committee. The judiciary is made from the onset to be independent and the hope of everybody. That is the last man standing. We must not allow it to go down. All right. Um, I, I want your thoughts on, you know, the current uh, cases that have become uh, popular, and that is the um, Anambra State elections and, of course, uh, May, Malabuni, different court orders. Um, how do you see this eventually playing out? Will, you know, some of these um, uh, ex parte orders stand at the end of the meeting with the CJN, uh, or will they be squashed? And, you know, which of them do we eventually, or do the, pe the people involved eventually... Um, you know, take uh, serious? Well, there's a difficulty because there are courts of coordinate jurisdiction at the base level. Or, uh, I mean, at the, at the high court. Now, if it were the Supreme Court or Court of Appeal decision, the law, the rules of practice, there are, there are precedents. There are decided cases on what should be done. If it is uh, a, a Supreme Court dis conflicting Supreme Court decision or Court of Appeal decision, the position of the law is that the last decision, the last order should be uh, the one obeyed. Because the law looks at it that the courts may have thought more in subsequent orders. Now, is, is in this particular case, the invitation of the CJN is not um, is is to, you know, in the way of discipline and conduct, not on the order itself. Those orders may still need to be set aside by an, with an formal application or appeared against, unless an appellate court makes a pronouncement, or this court, the court that made those orders, set them aside, they continue to be orders, valid orders. But, like I said, it, it, the orders of the Federal High Court, once there's an application to set it aside, will expire after 14 days. Okay. So if it's a Federal High Court order, it goes that way. If it's a, high, uh, a State High Court order, where you do not have the same provisions as in the, as the rules of the Federal High Court, then there is need for that court to set aside that order or an appellate court intervenes. The CJN, even though is the head of court in Nigeria, cannot set aside a valid order. Mm. But he can deal with the judge that made the order, and NBA can deal with the lawyers that brought the application. Fantastic. That leads me to my final question. When you, when you talk about dealing with the judges, dealing with the lawyers involved, what sort of punishment can we expect, you know, what sort of punishment can we expect, you know, by the CGN or the MBA on these judges that have gone ahead to cause this national embarrassment? Oh, oh there are pre precedents in the country for the judges. The judge can be dismissed who is suspended, can be cautioned, and may be found not to have done anything wrong. We have, we have precedents across these lines. Same with the lawyers. The Rules of Professional Conduct 2020 made provisions also for that. The lawyers can be struck off the role suspended from practice, cautioned, or set free. Hmm. Would, you, would you advise um, that, you know, Nigeria goes beyond just 
um, you know, a meeting with the CJN? Should there be further investigations to, you know, so for some of these judges? Because I remember in 20, uh, 2015 or 2016, when some doors were broken down at 1 a.m., there was a lot of people who, you know, said that was completely wrong. Um, but, you know, would you, would you, would you, would you suggest that there should be a little bit more? Do their work beyond what the CJN and the NJC journalists should do their work. Find out what whether there's there are some, some other things that happen. The security agencies in this country should do their work. There were we've had incidents where similar things happened in election petition. And then just you got evidence that bags of money were taken to those judges' houses. It was proved, and those judges were dismissed. Like you said, I will advocate that after dismissal, such people should be prosecuted or sued. All right, All right, Mr. Paul Ananamba, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. That's a good place to leave the conversation this morning. We thank you for coming on to provide your legal expertise on the CGN's invitation of these judges um, who have issued conflicting yeah. court orders. Before I sign off, okay. I would like you, the, the NBA will be having a webinar on this point on Tuesday. It will be good for Nigerians to hook on. Uh, we're bringing in retired judges of the Supreme Court, um, Court of Appeal, uh, senior advocates, former presidents of the bar, and the current president of MBA. We're putting them on the stage to discuss these issues as a further way to finding solution to this problem. I'll be hosting uh, MBA. Uh, Speedy will be hosting. I'll be, co I'll be coordinating that discussion. All right. Fantastic. We, we definitely will uh, connect with that. And, uh, and thanks also for uh, inviting us officially and for sharing with us. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break here. We'll be back to talk um, Guinea and their politics.